State breaks eighth in the nation in scoring with nearly 81 points a contest. Thanks, Megan. This is an Indiana team. Its first ever outright Big Ten regular season title. Went to the title game last year. Have only won it one time while Ohio State's looking for back-to-back 25-win -back seasons. And we have the top four seeds here in Minneapolis today. It has been a year of depth and competitiveness in the Big Ten, but it really has been these four teams standing out as we get underway. I mean, just to reiterate what Megan was talking about with Terry Morin, she said the last couple of practices she's been talking about the defense, and there you go. Ricky Harris downhill finishing in the paint. Now, they have to take pride in the defense. It's not anything schematic, but they have to buckle down and lock in on the defensive end. That has been their identity. She wants them to get back to it. Grace Berger doesn't often look for the three-point opportunities, but she knocks down her first. Well, guess what? That's a great start for Indiana because Grace Berger didn't score until the second quarter yesterday, and they need everything from everyone in that regard. Shooting 41% from three, but only 22 attempts this year. Here she gets a good seam to the basket. That is her game. Missed eight games with that knee injury, but she is a tough competitor. She better show it on the outside, but boy, on the inside, there's a fire burning. Mackenzie Holmes hit hard by Taylor Mikesell. But that defense presented it, and you have to take what the defense presents. The defense right there presented get downhill, attack that elbow and finish on the opposite side being a facilitator where she's averaging just under six assists to lead the team she can score the ball as well Kenzie Holmes goes one for two scored a career high 33 points in the second meeting incredibly efficient as well as she has been all year one of the best most efficient scores in the entire country is Ebony Walker a nifty move on the opposite side Ebony Walker transfer from Arizona State and Syracuse coming into her own late in this season counting on her and starting in place of Rebecca Mikulashikova late here hand in her face and Grace Berger does that oh, look Grace Berger is heating up so all three levels for Grace Berger early on and I know Terry Morin is pleased with her aggressiveness Grace Berger, three of three, seven points so far for her Indiana team. Moore McNeil, one of the most improved players in the conference. And you'll see Cody McMahon yeah. guarding Holmes in the post. Yeah, Cody McMahon is fronting Mackenzie Holmes down in there, and she has not gotten a touch yet. See her get downhill and finish at the rack. See, she stuffed the stat sheet yesterday as Fury gets the feed and finishes. She has been steady and four, started every single game this season for the Buckeyes. There's the attempted lob inside. That's exactly what Ohio State wants. That gets them on the fast break now, but they're going to slow things down until Mike Zell has a clear path to the rim. Miller Mike Zell broke you down on that play and there was no weak side help from indiana but kevin mcguff told us he said hey we're going to try something new we lost both games to indiana and defensively we're going to change what we're doing schematically we're going to front down inside on mckenzie holmes with our freshman cody mcmahon and she's done a tremendous job already the cody mcmahon spin move unguardable listen if you don't know the name Cody McMahon yet, you better write it down because she is a star. So strong and sturdy in there. Terry Warren coached her at USA Basketball. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year coming off her second career double-double. Her best start 19-0 without J.C. Sheldon playing two games since November 30th. And without their point guard, Madison Green, who's missing the entire season with injury, she's played such a huge role. Yeah, J.C. Sheldon came back yesterday after only playing in six games prior to that. Five of them were early in November. She came back a couple of weeks ago against Maryland. First foul on Lee Meister. That's going to send Ricky Harris to the free throw line. She's been active so far. Two points, two assists as well. Do everything kind of stand in point guard for this team. Download and subscribe now to stream portions of the Big Ten Men's Hockey Tournament quarterfinals and the Big Ten Wrestling Championships this weekend. Here's 
McDonald goes inside to the freshman Willie Meister. And scoring inside. Beautiful mm -hmm. offense. That's what we've come to expect from Indiana. Yeah. Darden Garzon. I mean, she's a freshman. Israeli national team member. The youngster, but she has so much experience. They call her the great Yardini for what she's able to do on the court. Chloe Moore McNeil. She took over at the point guard position when Grace Berger missed those eight games due to injury. Nikola Shakova straight on. That's where Scott misfires that time and chased down by Gerzon. Terry Moore was talking about how Chloe Moore McNeil has been such a demonstrative vocal leader for this Indiana ball club. And it's been nice to see. She leads the huddles in timeouts. She's very directive on the court as well. And that's what you need. You need somebody to organize and conduct. Zone in the post. The offensive rebound. Meister, a great move by the Minnesota native from nearby Rochester. And it's a 6 nothing run right back. Sounds like she has some people in the building. A stop. By Fury, she thought there should have been a whistle and ripped away by Sarah Scalia. More McNeil with speed and the finish. And a timeout called by Kevin McGuff with Indiana. An 8 nothing run. Well, when I said, when you challenge competitors, they step up. And that's how you coach. Sometimes it's not tactical or X and O's. You challenge their character. Hey, you know what you're able to do. Get out there and do it. Buckle down on defense and get an early start on offense. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter, and you'll see J.C. Sheldon up there on that press. She had a foot injury, stayed in shape, which she is so well known for, playing 40 minutes practically every single game, but with pool workouts. Pool workouts, if you've ever done them, listen, Ooh, those are not easy, all the resistance. I remember those at 6 a.m. in the morning. My goodness, that's a throwback. Rebecca Mikulashikova fouls Mackenzie Holmes. She has the ability, the wherewithal, and the strength to get the ball up and in. Christy, there was a full-on arm bar. It's like a turnstile. You gotta give some force to get through. And that's exactly what she did. And then ripping the ball away from Scalia. Skip pass, Taylor Fury. So graceful along the baseline, but too strong. When you take a drive like that, you've got to square your body to the backboard so you have more leverage and you can utilize the backboard to finish on those plays. You can get a float game coming baseline, but that's a high degree of difficulty in terms of your body balance. Five seconds for Berger. Able to get a hand in there is Harris. It bounces out at the buzzer. But this Indiana defense has forced Ohio State to miss 10 straight shots. Buzzer beater by the player of the year in the Big Ten, Caitlin Clark, just days ago. So this is a team that's battle-tested. They know who they are, which is why Terry Moore is drawing them back to their identity. We were sleepwalking during the first quarter of the game. And now, you know, for them to make that adjustment and come back, that's just what you like to see if you're Terry Moore and first half. They start out the second turnover against Ohio State. Your zone, calling forward inside. She wants that matchup against Mike Sell. So she can score like that. She's so long and lanky inside. And she's 6'2". On the perimeter. There were four white jerseys in the paint as they tried to feed Cody McMahon inside. Thanks, Megan. You see Cody going to work. And gets the steal again. It's working when she is the match. The spin move couldn't quite get it that time. Taylor Fury not there. She's someone else who also shoots at a really high percentage, especially that close in Ohio State, has just been ice cold. The opposite, 16-0 run. Here's the thing, listen, they've ramped up their defense, which means you setting up your cuts to get open and your passes seem to be seem to seem in particular real important. Wings, real important, all right? Everybody has to work a little bit harder to get open, all right, to get open. Meanwhile, Ohio State has missed 13 straight shots. They have not scored since the 534 mark of the first quarter. And that makes it tough. And there's the lob and the block. Great play by Emma Shoemate, one of the key role players on this team. 
There's Ricky Harris, and it just falls out. Taylor Ferry right there to clean things up, though, to get that streak off their back right now. Berger dumps it into Holmes, an even higher percentage shot. That's what Indiana does. Mike Sell going right at Moore McNeil. I think anybody would have thought Grace Burton would have just shot that ball. She goes to Mackenzie Holmes, even closer inside. <laughs> it's just a wise play, strong action there by Indiana. Shoemate, no good from three. There is Fury skying for that offensive tool. As she should, right? Shots aren't falling. You need to get into your press. You've been missing shots. Now you get a bucket to go, and now you can apply this defensive pressure that they've been so good at this season. Almost stolen away by McMahon. Coaches love deflections. Dial it up and lock in on the defensive side and give yourselves a chance to get back in. Ricky Harris off the mark again. She's one for six, made her first shot. That Meister scream. Burger one on one against Harris trying to stand her ground. Five seconds for the Hoosiers. Out of the picture is Harris who recovers, but then a foul with two on the clock. on your screen or register right now at btnbig10k.com. Ohio State trying to get back on track. Also have not made a three in this game as well, but this is an offense that scores over 80 points per game that is third in the Big Ten. But they get it from their defense, and they haven't been able to apply that same pressure because they're missing shots, Lauren, and... You know, they're one of the best teams in the country in terms of scoring off of turnovers. Sarah Scalia and one. Indiana's going to push with a pass. Sarah Scalia, I don't know how she made that shot. Sarah Scalia came here and fit the culture as an ultra competitive, hard working player. She completes the three point play. The foul is called away from the ball. Taylor Mike Sells. We're not just going to talk about the pink elephant in the room. We're going to say, hey, just keep shooting, keep doing you. And she got back on track, got back in the gym, got some extra reps. Foul is going to go against Indiana and Chloe Moore McNeil. That is her second. Grace Berger checking back in. Mike Sell, a long three in Ohio State now 0 for 12 from long range We're getting good looks Mike Sell was about three steps behind the line there when she pulled but she was leaning backwards taking some force out of the shot Arizona is stopped in the paint Sarah Scalia she likes that shot has done it a lot in this state and a lot this season for the Hoosiers oh man Sarah Scalia McMahon inside against Holmes, can't get it off glass, one more try, and she'll be shooting two. Oh my gosh, I mean, her her mental makeup, it doesn't matter how old I am or whatever, I'm a freshman, blah, blah, I'm here to go to work. McGuff, there she says, I'm going to beat the Big Ten defensive player of the year at her game in the post. Here's Sarah Scalia again, and she's got it again. Nine Indiana points from Sarah Scalia. Cody McMahon does it one more time. Just falling off the front of the rim. Still battling for it. And then we'll go back to Indiana. Kevin McGuff said she practices every single day so hard. And you should have seen his face when he said that. Like, she is going all out all the time. Not just on game day. Every drill, every practice. And that's a lesson if you're a young player. You can't just turn things off and on in terms of effort. And that's not just physical, that's mental. Are you locked in? Are you listening? That last foul, by the way, going on uh, to Fury. Her second, so Ohio State has two starters with two personals here in the first half. In rhythm, Sarah Scalia. 
You think she likes playing here? And the Indiana fans like the way she's playing here right now. Three of four for three for Sarah Scalia so far. Kalashnikova tries to answer and she does. That's really where she's expanded her game this year. Make sure you stick around. The State Farm Halftime Report, Justine Moore, Al Autumn Johnson, Megan McEwen, Stephanie White get your first half highlights and analysis. Body strength and her speed. Like she shines in those bigger moments in games because of her personality being one of the best competitors in the conference. Two seconds to go, left way short by Holmes. And Indiana throttling Ohio State in the first half. It's come from getting defensive stops. We need to continue trying to get some transition offense going and rush this pace of play. Well, it makes a difference when you can knock in shots, especially if you're Ohio State. You can get into your defense, you can get into your 2-2-1 press, and then fall back and be in more of a rhythm on the defensive side. And you know, everyone talks about the offense being off, but it throws everything off, especially when you rely upon that to be the trigger for your defense. 26 points, a season low and a half for Ohio State. The previous low is 29. That happened two times, the other time against Indiana. Sydney Parrish, all kinds of time. Ohio State normally scoring 81 points per game. Knocked away by Sydney Parrish. You're going to make the offense think about making that same pass next time in your area. So that's what you want. You want to speed your opponents up, but you also want them to overthink their decisions as well. Ricky Harris, the second three today. That is interesting, Christine. I was surprised. And what are your thoughts about that? Because that is their identity at that press. Well, maybe Indiana was scoring at the back of that press, and maybe they just felt like it wasn't as effective as they wanted it to be. So maybe they just want to be more sturdy in the quarter court. Make or miss, just go straight back on this. Numbers for Ohio State leaking ahead. Taylor Fury, so much speed. Get the gaps, get your defense, and finish. And again, a big bucket, quarter court defense. No press. Interesting. Ohio State has struggled with depth this season, with the injuries they've had, but they have been defined by that full court press, the ability to turn teams over, turn it into offense. Chloe Moore McNeil launches a three, and Fury gets the board again to McMahon. of a make you're gonna see. Mateo Hutzel will take it. But it was a dramatic shot that falls. They just need to get a couple stops, but Indiana keeps coming down the pipe, knocking in shot after shot. Hard to find a better player in the mid-range than Grace Berger right there. I mean, she wears the number 34 for Paul Pierce. We all know about his mid-range game, and she just loves that nail area on the floor right at the high post. Another three for Ohio State, held to one in the first half. They've got two here early on in the third. But now they need consecutive stops on this side. Grace Berger, mid-range again. Not that gap, Grace Berger. Mike Sell threading the needle down low. Fury sticks with it. Indiana head coach Terry Morin saying to her team, we cannot give up open threes. I don't care if you have to switch, especially on Taylor and Mike Sell, we cannot leave them open and give them that confidence. So far, the Buckeyes have hit three threes in this game. Another score again for the Buckeyes. This is a team that can reel off points in a hurry, provide pressure in a hurry. It's a tough spot for Moore McNeil and J.C. Sheldon there to collect the loose ball. And that's not where you want to put the basketball in the coffin corners against a ravenous defense that Ohio State presents. And look, now they're back into the press. I think they lulled Indiana to sleep by going right back after a made shot. Grace Berger will try to settle things down for the Hoosiers. And it 
goes out of bounds back to Ohio State. It's exactly what they need with this 6 nothing run. It is forcing turnovers and the three-point ball falling that have made the difference. J.C. Sheldon barreling in, leaves it for Ricky Harris, who draws the foul on Holmes, and that is number three on her. With a 19-0 record this year because of their defensive efforts, and then pressing at a frenetic pace. Taylor Siri, so difficult to the top of that press with her length and speed. Ricky Harris says, this works to perfection. Talking to them about their press, I believe it was J.C. Sheldon and Taylor Mike Sell and, and just what it meant for them or how they get that done. And I remember Taylor Mike Sell saying, hey, we just fly around and read one another. So it's not necessarily you go here and then I'll go there. It's like a magnet. They're moving on a string together, but they understand the chemistry of one another, and that's what makes their defense so good. Ohio State with its help. Now scoring Indiana by 10 in this third quarter, 19 to nine. And when you fly around like that defensively, it makes it difficult to scout because there are no rules. There are no rules, you're just going. J.C. Sheldon falling away, off balance. And that's Ohio okay. State creeping closer. Sorry, so that's what they need from her. 2-2-1 two, two, again, now they're getting to the back of that press again, which is why I think they may have come out of it initially. Cody, Cody McMahon trying to save it. Ohio State trailed by 24 points. They're within eight. Taylor Fury will shoot two. And that's a conundrum for Indiana. Front court. Billy Meister backing up Mackenzie Holmes. Big free throws by Fury. And now here's the press. A one, two, two. This time. Trapping. Oh. Oh. Up for grabs. Poked ahead by Harris. Shelton can't finish. But that's the kind of effort they want. And they get the turnover. That looked like a 50-50 ball in football. And Harris came out on top. She feeds in theory. And Ohio State within four. And Kevin McGuff demonstrably waved his hand like get back up there and get it again oh stolen from behind by fury she's been incredibly active today having a breakout season she came in knowing defense has added offense but still such a huge part of her game and that bench was ready to explode if that had gone Indiana can settle down right here, get back into what they want to do. Terry Warren talking to Grace Berger on the sideline and giving them an offensive set. Berger, that's the shot they needed to try and settle things down. But Ohio State undeniably forcing them to throw it where they want the ball thrown, which is up the sideline so they can bring another body and use the backcourt and the sideline as extra defenders. Megan McKeown is listening in to the Indiana huddle. Coach Moran told her team, take a deep breath. We're fine. We knew this press was coming. We must stay off of the sideline. After made shots, so we got comfortable with that and just coming down court to court, going through our stuff, and turned Indiana over those five times and got themselves right back into this. A little bit of an extra cushion for Indiana, which is led by as many as 24. Rush shot there by Harris and a jump ball. And possession arrow the other way. Rebecca Brunson, who's won five WNBA championships. Cheryl Reed here as well. And the Minnesota Lynx. They've been here Head all coach. week. They've been here all week, Sloan, and I love it. Rebecca Brunson from Oxen Hill High School. Love to see coaches in, in there. Taylor Theory picks up her third. Where Stephanie White's in the house too. She's the <laughs> Connecticut Sun coach. <laughs> My girl, sister from another mister. For a minute to play in the third. Ricky Harris can't quite get it going underneath. One more try for Taylor Theory, who has owned the glass in this game. Well, she's fourth in the Big Ten with offensive rebounds with three a game as Cody McMahon 
was hustling for that and may have caught a knee to the face of Sydney Parrish. Which was a foul on Garzon, her first. So. She's eight points today. Fourth in the conference and three-point field goal percentage, just under 41% for Taylor Mikesell. Hasn't been able to shoot at that clip yet today, but she knocked in that a couple of them, but one dramatically trickled through after several bounces on the rim. Up ahead to Holmes and a foul on Mike Sell. The ball is up for grabs and that is her third personal. Both teams in the bonus. Well, what a risky pass. Chloe Moore McMahon oh God, throws that one and and I guess if that were football, there'd be a Think there'd so. be a flag on that. <laughs> Pass on I don't even watch football like that. <laughs> but Chloe Moore McNeil can't throw that pass. And you've seen that. They've tried to get it to Mackenzie Holmes over the line, but to, on the sideline, you don't want it there. You want to get it right in the middle of the floor and apply that pressure with your press offense and then force Ohio State to fall back into their quarter court deep. to play for Fury. Harris high arcing shot misses everything, but a resurgent third quarter for Ohio State, outscoring the Hoosiers by 10. As we said, start of the season, 19-0, got all the way up to second in the country where Indiana now sits because of their defense. Let's check in with Megan McEwen. No live ball turnovers was the message Terry Warren had to her team. Even when it comes to taking the ball out in the press, make sure you don't take it out too far towards the sideline. That green light to call the timeout because you, you don't want to have your bag emptied when you need it at the end of the game. Taylor Fury, a track athlete down the floor. She battles for that ball. So Mika Lashikova, all she had to do was catch and shoot. Lashapova stepping out behind the three-point line. The last foul going on here, zone for second. McMahon rises, and she'll shoot the free throw. Semi. Semi leapfrog by the freshman. Cody McMahon elevating, getting the and one. The human wrecking ball. Freshman of the year in the Big Ten this season, and this is not the last time you'll hear her name. 12 games this season, Sloan, she has scored more than 20 points, and that's rivaling Kelsey Mitchell's freshman record. The largest comeback in tournament history, 19 points. Ohio State trailed by 24 today. Cody McMahon playing some great defense. One second left for Moore McNeil and Taylor Fury. And it is whistled a foul on Garzone. She has 11 rebounds today. She is dominating. She's a worker. Let Taylor Fury take a cut to the block and sit down and form a seal on the defender behind her and then pass it in from the wing. Can't force the action on a mismatch of an angle. Sarah Scalia. The three. She is just the reliability of her offensive production from range has been excellent. And Mike Sell trying to get free against Moore McNeil loses it. And they string some scoring possessions together after they've been on their heels this entire second half. Moore McNeil tried to change in the air, and Lily Meister. Middle of the floor, Grace Berger staying at the basket line. Sarah Scalia able to nail that shot because of the great spacing that's created because the defense has to commit to the middle of the floor. A little that's bit more of a cushion that looked in danger of shrinking to nothing. Cody McMahon forces it up. She has a motor. You can't coach motor. I mean, you have players on your team that have motor and you can place them places, but you can't bring that out of players, okay? She came with that heart and hustle and passion and want to, not have to. There's a difference between want to and have to. Four Hoosiers with four personals. Ricky Harris saves it miraculously. Theory and one. Look at the defense.
offense. Deflections. Oh, towing the sideline. Sits up on the sideline. Bench over here, the table. Taylor's hashtag now. <laughs> All my little nieces and nephews on my kids' teams. Y'all heard that before. <laughs> and rightfully so. That's right. That's my baby. Probably more McNeil has the baseline cut off, trying to find any other route to the basket. Me Meister right there. Can't finish. Blocked one more time. I mean, only five and a half minutes to go in a two-possession game. All these free throws that you can materialize are definitely much needed. You just saw Holmes and Garzone on the bench with four personals apiece. Meister also has four. And then Mackenzie Holmes, the Defensive Player of the Year, shooting 69% from the floor this season, will be back in the contest. J.C. Sheldon drives hard. J.C. Sheldon up to the 12 minutes she played yesterday. It'll be interesting, Christy, to see how much more we see of J.C. Sheldon. She's not on any specific minutes limit. And this is based on how she's doing. They do want to limit longer stretches as she's coming back from this injury. And Ohio State forces the Hoosiers to call a timeout. It's come apart multiple times. Had it made very difficult by this Ohio State press. What the Buckeyes have done to every opponent this season. Gear zone, there's the five seconds. Might need to get her back in here for some offense. But hey, they didn't get the five last time. Garden Gare zone had a problem getting it in. The floater and the finish by JC Sheldon coming up huge in just her third game since November 30th and a jump ball. Indiana needed that stop in a big way. There is strong momentum coming from Ohio State. J.C. Sheldon, quick hands, quick feet, and the finish. Indiana now with numbers as Berger spins, and she is fouled. For J.C. Sheldon. We love to see that. She always eats breakfast with her on game days. Prior to the game, it's just a beautiful thing. And going on the second is Berger. Taylor Mikesell re-entering this contest. She drives hard. Count it! Taylor Mikesell, I said she was sitting over there on the bench, and she was doing because she was ready for moments like this. Drive it to the bucket and finish. Draw some contact. Lean in. You know you're going to get contact. She's feeling the moment right now. We're in 24 for the late night. Iconic Kobe Bryant. First lead. Berger can't find any breathing room till that shot. Big bucket by Grace Berger. Sheldon back out on offense for the Buckeyes. Great pump fake, the feed to Theory and free throws. How smart was that for Taylor Theory to pump fake and then get into the body of Yard and Garrison, who is now fouled out. He's done for today. Look at the patience of Theory. She's just so smart. I mean, she knew. Or McNeil off the foot, but McMahon keeps it alive. It is Harris. But an offensive foul. McMahon running to the bench here quickly, wiping something off her hands. I think she fell into some fans over there that had some beverages right there. Uh, but she saved it. And Ricky Harris was whistled for the charge. Big time play. Sydney Parrish able to get it in to Scalia. We're under a minute to play in Big Ten semifinal number one. Down inside, Holmes misses. Shoots that one short. Two for six today for Holmes. She gets it deep against McMahon. That's something she's not going to miss. The biggest key in this possession is going to be getting a defensive rebound for the Hoosiers. And IU wants to make sure if they're in traffic, they use that final timeout. 
Harris into Fury. 40 seconds to go. Harris with speed goes all the way to the rim. Big time play by Ricky Harris. I told you. Buckle up. Hold me back so my headset doesn't fall off. The dramatics down the stretch here. Grace Berger has got some space, flips it up. Nothing there. Got it. Less than two seconds different shot in game clock. Mike Sell is fouled. Both teams out of timeouts right now, and both teams in the bonus. Mike Sell three of three today, and you see it right there. 87%. At this point in the season, set it herself for missing the first. She goes one for two to make it a two-point lead with 26 seconds on the clock. Now, without timeouts, Indiana cannot use that to try and advance the ball here, so they'll have to go the full length. They did an offensive defensive substitution this time with Taylor Mikesell on the bench. Shot clock is off for Moore. McNeil looking inside. McMahon breaks up the lob pass. In Indiana basketball, trailing by two, 17.5 seconds to go. Berger is the inbounder, just gets it into Parrish, being guarded by Harris. Parrish, awkward shot. Holmes has it taken away. And jump ball, Buckeye basketball. And Mike Sale coming back in, offensive, defensive, substitution. And it's J.C. Sheldon getting down in the mud for the ball. Theory into Mike Sale in a tough spot near Indiana's sideline being hounded. Oh. Sheldon trying to take some time on the clock. She took a little bit of a detour instead of going over. Oh, seconds are precious. And Sheldon in her second game back after missing so many. Only playing six games prior to yesterday's game. It's on the line from this clutch moment. Her basketball time on the floor has been so limited, and yet she steps up in a tense moment and knocks down the first free throw to make it a three-point game. She wants this moment, so does Emmy. Third game since November 30th. 12 points, four steals this half. And the most clutch free throws. Knocked down. Indiana has no timeouts. The heave by Berger isn't there. The Buckeyes never stopped believing it. The biggest comeback in Big Ten tournament history.